we have made it to Cork, Ireland. So originally this was not supposed to be a port on our British Isles cruise. We were supposed to be in France tomorrow because of the strikes. We were rerouted and we got an extra stop in Ireland, which I'm super excited about. So there was a free shuttle to bring us into Cork, but the line was really, really long. So we opted to call a taxi instead. It was 35 euros and about 30 to 40 minutes, 35, 40 minutes to get from the port into uh, the city center where we want to be because our first stop is the English market. Because it's almost lunchtime. It is, yes, we are hungry. It is time for lunch. And even though the name is English market, it's supposed to be very Irish. Let's go check it out. But first, look at all those pigeons. That's a bunch of pigeons and more pigeons over here in the fountain taking a bath. made it inside the market now this is one of the oldest markets in Europe it's been here since 1788 uh, that you know had new buildings and things like that but there has been a market in this location for a very long time so this particular building has been here since the late 1800s it's been refurbished in like the 1900 you know 1990s and it's really cool we've already done like a walk through just to kind of see what all's here there's so many different options. So you can come and grocery shop here to get good local food. So there's several butchers, there's a fishmonger that you can buy fresh vegetables and fruits here. If you want something prepared, there's food vendors that are gonna you know, make you something for lunch. You also have olive samples right here. It's just like anything and everything you can imagine. And we noticed there's a second floor too. So let's get rocking around here. I'm excited. First stop is the Toons Bridge Dairy. We got some mozzarella, fresh mozzarella. He said you could get the big like balls of it or you could get the salad which has got some like mixed in with some, some peppers and like some kind of dressing uh, and looks like some parsley. <laughs> A little pepper. Mm. Oh. That was delicious that that pepper? Yeah, it's like a pepper. I'm gonna find out what that is. It's delicious. But you gotta try this mozzarella, it's fantastic. That's definitely not a tomato. I don't think it's a tomato. Mmm. Isn't it good? It is so good. Try that red thing. <laughs> it's, it's so much flavor. Mmm. That's a tomato. Is that a type of tomato? Yep. Oh, good. Because it didn't taste like a pepper, but it didn't mm -hmm. taste like a tomato either. It's a tomato. That's delicious. That is really good. Isn't it? Yeah, I just asked him. He said they're just slightly sun-dried tomatoes. And they got like this, he wouldn't tell me the kind of secret like, sauce. Secret sauce, the marinade that they have on it. Mmm, delicious. Americano. In a fancy little cup. <laughs> I have a, up. I have a hot chocolate coming. Orange hot chocolate. Yum. We asked, do you have hot chocolate? They go, no, nope, just orange hot chocolate. I'm like, oh, we're curious. Ooh, my Americana's delicious, Is but it? it's nothing in comparison to the orange hot chocolate. Oh. I mean, when you first look at it, it looks like strawberry, like strawberry marshmallows. Well, it's got pink marshmallows in it, but when you taste it, it's just a very subtle flavor of the orange. It's really good. Mm. Are those strawberry marshmallows? <laughs> yeah. So you got strawberry marshmallows, shavings of chocolate. Mm -hmm. What else you put in there? Some cinnamon? Yes. Okay, chocolate sprinkles and then some shaved flakes. It's so good. And it's beautiful. Mushroom pie. Chicken, bacon, and mushroom pie. Oh. Cheers to me. Got me a uh, local lager for lunch. I decided to go outside of my comfort zone and order something that I've never had. And I'm not sure if I'm gonna like it, but I'm gonna give it a try. I ordered a Pagardi cheddar and caramelized onion tart. So this is a local Irish dish. It looks like a quiche or a slice of pie. So let's give this a try. So it is on a pie crust. You want it, because when you cut into it, you can tell it's a pie crust. You can see those really thick brown caramelized onions and all the cheese, and then there's cheese on top. And it's this, this one, is it? Mmm. 
That's good. Mmm. Really good. So I got the uh, bacon and cheese toasty, and look at this, y'all. Oh my gosh, so that much cheese. That bread is so nice and crispy, and that cheese is just oozing out of it, and I was just wanting a hot sandwich. It's also got the caramelized onions in it, so the sweetness of the caramelized onions with that mm, savory of the cheese and the bacon, it's like a big, thick slab of cured bacon. Mm. Mm. That was delicious. So the entire upstairs is the Farmgate Cafe where we just ate. So the plan was to go up there and get something and split it, but we each ate something. So now we're too full to get anything else down here except maybe something for dessert. Uh... Cork City Jail. So we've never done a jail tour before and it's it's spelled G-A-O-L. I think it's still pronounced jail though, but this is neat. It's a museum now. It's not an active working prison, obviously, but it's accepted its first prisoners in 1824 and ran into the early 20th century. But so this is going to be pretty neat to see what prison life was like back then. The buildings looks more like a castle than a prison. Just an FYI, it's about a 15 to 20 minute trek from the center of the city up a hill. So that's why my face is all red, jacket's gone, got real hot. Um, the cost to get in is 10 euros without the audio and 12 euros with the audio. I figure if you're gonna do it, you might as well learn the history, right? All right, let's get started. Through here is what the prison looks like whenever it was first built. And in the beginning, men, women, and children were housed here. So later on, the, the West Wing, which is what we're about to walk through, was remodeled in 1870. In 1870, all of this section was remodeled. So the audio tour tells you that this cell is available for you to come in and close the door so you can see what it feels like to be a prisoner. So at least you do have daylight, that's good. But I mean, like I can almost touch the walls. It's not big. And I don't know how many people were housed in here. If it was one or two, there's no bathroom. So that means they had buckets or chamber pots or something like that to use the bathroom. And then this little slit is all you have that you can see out into the prison. Looks like the women had a much better setup. They have an actual bed in their cell where the men's cell just has like a little pallet on the floor. In the very beginning when this prison started, the prisoners got bread and milk and that's it. And it didn't get much better. They got a little bit more food and if they had hard labor, they got a little bit of meat, but they just got enough food to keep them alive and that was it. Are you in trouble? I have gotten myself in trouble, it seems. Um, yeah, I'm in the pillory. So this is how the inmates were punished. They would have to sit in this pillory locked in with their head in their hands or arms. My arms won't fit through there <laughs> uh, for anywhere from an hour to a whole day, just locked in here uncomfortably. Man, that would suck. You ready to get out? Yeah. <laughs> So this is the punishment room right here, which shows all the different forms of punishment. So Jason shows you the pillory, but also they would take their clothes away from them. So they were just in their underwear. And if it was cold, that's not good, but that would keep them from escaping. They would make them make clothes. They would whip them, or if they had a really long sentence, they would put them on a, on a ship and ship them over to Australia. So this prison opened in 1824 and was a prison for a hundred years. It shut down in 1923. The building was used for other things for a while and then it was laid vacant. And in the 1990s, they came in and refurbished it as a prison museum. So very interesting. I mean, just seeing the architecture and the fact that they built it 
looking more like a castle than a prison. You can see the, the full scale model inside to see the scale of it. It's three stories tall. I'm not sure how many prisoners were the max that were here, but you sure wouldn't want to be in there. Neat experience. It was really cool to walk through such an old building and creepy as well. It's a nice little reminder. Watch your P's and Q's. You don't want to end up in something like this, like the modern day version. Just being closed up in that room with Elisa just for like 30 seconds. <laughs> and those were kind of big cells, actually. Yeah, they were. I know they're a lot smaller these days and still super claustrophobic. But I did hear that a lot of the uh, inmates didn't spend much time in their cells. They were actually out of their cells most of the time working out in the gardens and around the, the prison. Well, y'all, we have brought it in for a landing. This is the end of our journey, more or less. This is the last port day here in Cork. We're at the Rising Suns Brewery. I've had myself a local IPA called Handsome. Elisa's got a nice cider that is also local. She actually said it's the best one she's ever had. And we're just tapering the evening off. We're soon to be getting back on the ship but had a good day here didn't get to vlog a lot just because things have happened but we've had a great time and uh whew, it's been quite the journey yeah quite lots the, of ports lots of ports and uh, we get back on the ship soon but we're not done yet stay tuned <laughs>